Before we get into this video, if you enjoy chatting cameras and street photography, go check out my Discord server, Megapix Skills, in the description and pinned comment of this video. Following on from some recent videos I've done talking about more budget camera gear, I've had a lot of comments saying, you know, you can't find cameras for that little money at the moment, it's impossible. Well, I've compiled a list today with five cameras under $400 and then one just over $400 that I would think is seriously worth checking out. MPB definitely have a slight markup on their used gear compared to prices you can find on eBay, but they offer complete convenience in terms of fast delivery, pretty good returns policy, and overall vetting of the equipment before it comes to you. Today, you're gonna know at least six cameras that are seriously worth looking at in terms of budget gear for street photography. So before I show you the exact cameras that I've already compiled into a convenient list, I'm first gonna show you how I browse MPB in a sensible way to be able to find these sort of deals. So literally go to the top left, and then I go to cameras. If you go to premium compact cameras, you actually weirdly miss out on some compact cameras that I have no idea where they are actually classified under any of their new categories since the website has recently had a bit of a refurb. So I just click on the cameras overall and you'll immediately be fed the most expensive cameras they have. The Leica S3 is £12,600. Reverse that to sort from price low to high and then now we're in the neck of the woods we want to be in for some fun affordable street photography cameras that you know you can probably sell back to MPB for like £30, $50 less than you originally buy it from them. And this is what I typically do when everyone is going out drinking on a weekend. I browse used cameras until I find a deal that I think tickles my fancy. I've already done this exact process just today to compile the list that I have for you. So let's get into the first camera. So the first and the absolute cheapest on the list, we have a Sony RX100 Mark II. For some reason at the moment, there's no RX100 Mark Ones on the market. So we've got the Mark II here, and we've got several in well-used condition, which I've mentioned in videos before about buying things in well-used condition. Just check the actual condition on MPB. They normally have a few photos to be able to show you the exact model and its current state of either disrepair or whatever. The main thing to look at is the LCD screen, I find, because if you have a completely ruined LCD screen, that can be quite distracting. So this RX100, from what you can see, the LCD screen is in totally fine nick. They've still got the hot shoe cover on for some reason, but have also simultaneously kind of scuffed up the edges. But again, scuffed up edges, you're gonna do that to your camera at some point anyway. So you might as well, if you're gonna spend 174 pounds on a full-fledged, decent compact camera, the RX100 Mark II is not a bad decision. So £174 comes in at $205.95. The RX100 has a 20 megapixel sensor with a lens that is a 28 to 100 millimeter equivalent. And that is on a one inch sensor, I believe. You know, one of those not one inch sensors. It also shoots full HD video at 60 FPS. I don't believe the second RX100 had any sort of stabilization in the body. You might have an optically stabilized lens, but in terms of photography, you've got quite a lot of reach on that lens and more resolution than you should know what to do with. It's got higher resolution than this A7S, so as far as I'm concerned, that's a pretty that's a pretty solid buy actually. Under 200 pounds and it's $205.95 in total. That is our cheapest camera on the list. Let's move on to the second one. This is the Fuji X30. These two are also in heavily used condition, um, but both of which that I found actually have the LCD in perfectly good condition, which again, I think is probably the most important thing. There's a little bit of scuffing around the EVF on one of them, and the lens is looking a little bit funky. But if you read the notes on MPB, they'll always state what condition the camera is actually in. If you ever received it and it wasn't in that condition, just send it back, literally send it back. This camera comes in at 194 pounds, which is $229.62. This camera also shoots 1080p at 60 FPS, which is surprising. The sensor is only 12 megapixels. And the X30 also has a zoom lens, so it's a 28 mil up to 112 mil. This is the absolute cheapest all-in-one Fuji I can currently find an MPB, but we do actually have another Fuji coming up later in this list. Next is probably my favorite and most surprising find on this list and the one that 
inspired me to make this video because I was just browsing the other day, found this particular camera in such good condition and thought, I would buy that. Like, I would genuinely buy this. And also the lens choice we have here is quite broad because of the fact that it's an interchangeable lens and it's micro four thirds. So this is the Olympus Pen E PL5. There are actually other more up-to-date versions like the PL7 and the PL8 available on MPB. So they're the newer models, but in worse condition for a little bit more money. But this one caught my eye just because it was in such good condition and I kind of preferred the overall styling of this model. Having not used any of the Olympus pens before, this one looks pretty decent in my opinion. It has 16 megapixels, it does 1080p at 30 FPS, so nothing special there. The fact that we have an interchangeable lens system and overall quite small, compact, sort of street photography styling. It's got a nice grip on it. I think with the right lens, this could be quite a pretty little street camera. So the lens that I have found for Micro Four Thirds in this situation is the Sigma 30mm f2.8 art lens. That is a Micro Four Thirds lens and it's only 84 pounds. So when paired up with the Olympus, it comes to 198 pounds and then $234.48 for that entire setup which to me is decent, like seriously, seriously decent. And I've never really had an Olympus. I've shot with one a couple of times, but this looks like kind of a nice, kind of a nice option. The only thing that makes me sort of concerned here is the lack of like manual dials around on the camera. But anyone who uses Olympus and specifically the pen series will be able to correct me on that. I'm assuming it's sort of the thumb dial with like a multifunction setup. So I think pretty nice little Micro Four Thirds kit and also upgradable in terms of the lens path and the camera body path. Next up, we have the Lumix GX7. So the older brother of this camera has been mentioned a lot in the comments of my LX100 video, uh, the GX8, and also the GX9 is also out there, which to be honest, looks like a fantastic camera when it comes to video. Uh, the GX7, not too dissimilar from the camera we actually just looked at, offers ABC HD. I love the ABC HD stickers. We don't get them anymore. But remember at one point, every single video camera would put AVC HD on it like it mattered, like we were ever gonna use it. Similar styling to the pen, but obviously with a big beefy viewfinder on it, which is quite nice. And also this screen is in good condition. This camera is actually rated in good condition. We also have an addition of dials on here. So there's like a rear thumb dial, also a top dial here. We have movie recording and this camera body is only 154 pounds. This to me looks like the kind of funky cousin of my LX100. So if I was looking to get something interchangeable lens that's not too dissimilar, this is probably what I would look at at the moment if I wanted to keep things along the same sort of budget. Again, we're gonna pair this up with this Sigma 30 mil and that Sigma comes at a 60 mil full frame equivalent. So just over 50 millimeters, more of a portrait lens. So if you're gonna be using it for street photography, there were some other like 14 mils out there as well that you could look at. There was 14 mils and 17 mils for about the same amount of money. This GX7 is 60 megapixels. Then we've also got 1080p at 60 FPS. I think as well, it's a shame that this camera is only available on MPB at the moment in black on black because the silver on black combination looks really, really nice if you're after something like specifically with quite a street style. So I think this is a pretty good shout and again, this only comes in at £238, which is $281.85 for an entire camera setup for, to be honest, decent, decent photography. In one of these GX bodies, what you are getting is a compact setup, but with interchangeable lens capability. So if you're looking for an affordable street photography setup and you're mainly shooting during the day, Micro Four Thirds is decent. And also the lenses are pretty, swap and change like you've got all the like leica lumix lenses the lumix lenses themselves the olympus lenses the sigma lenses there's a really large amount of micro four thirds class out there and the bodies are cheap onto our fifth camera and this is the only one from canon this is the canon eos m uh this camera was an absolute punch in the gut when it came out when canon finally made a mirrorless camera and this is what they made i think everyone who was a frequent Canon DSLR user for both photo and video was gutted. Uh, but now looking at it retrospectively, it's kind of a funky little thing. Like it, it's ugly, 
in my opinion. 104 pounds in well-used condition, but the screen is in perfect condition. I have a feeling it's touchscreen, which is quite cool. Um, and you have the Canon interface, which to be honest, to me is quite a big deal. You have Canon colors. To be honest, as long as you're not shooting video, it shouldn't really matter. It comes in with 18 megapixels. It's 1080p video as well at 60 FPS. But I have a feeling the 60 FPS is only in 720p. Yeah, that's correct. And it's an APS-C sensor, which means it's actually the biggest sensor on this lineup so far. And also you then have access to all of Canon's EOS M lenses and all of their EF lenses via an adapter. This is not the perfect little camera. I have a feeling that the EOS M is probably a better photo camera than it was ever a video camera. You can actually get a magic lantern on this. And I've actually seen DSLR video shooter did a magic lantern full cinema rig with this camera. You definitely could get it to a pretty weird beast level if you really wanted to push it that way. But in terms of street photography, I think it's a pretty interesting little bit of kit now, especially when lens wise, you can get one of the 22 mil lenses, which I think is a 30 mil or 35 mil full frame equivalent. And altogether that would cost you 273 pounds or $323.74 for Again, quite a nice little nifty bit of kit. Not the absolute like street favorite. It is kind of not vintagey style or anything like that. Lumix, Olympus, and of course Fuji love that sort of style. Having like the digital take on a rangefinder body, but I think it's still quite an interesting one. And that is all five of our cameras that are under $400. And now we have just one more that is just over $400 by like $30. So we have the Fuji X-E1. The Fuji X-E1 is of course, there's the X-E2 and the X-E3, I believe now. The Fuji X-E1 is kind of like a faux Leica, if you will. And this body is actually 199 pounds in good condition. It has a 16 megapixel sensor, video 1080p at 24 fps but it also has an interchangeable lens system so say if you were looking at something like a fuji x100 you're looking at pretty much the same styling you don't have that hybrid optical evf but you get a really nice fuji body that cool sort of grip and then you could pick up the fuji 35 mm xc f2 lens which comes in at a 50 mil full frame equivalent, making the full setup 363 pounds or $432.26. My top picks from this list would definitely be the Fuji X-E1 straight away, just because it's the most capable Fuji camera at that price. But then underneath that, I would probably skip the EOS M, even though it's one of the more valuable with a bigger sensor. I'd probably look at like the GX7, just because I've had such a good time with the LX100 having a mirrorless interchangeable lens sort of version of that would be really really cool and then i'd probably consider the olympus if i was just getting a camera to have around for anyone to use something like that rx100 mark ii that's under 200 pounds like already pretty scuffed up that's something i'd consider getting and just let anyone use it don't be precious with it at all just take the photos get the videos you'd have so much fun playing around with that camera. Okay, we've been browsing cameras for long enough. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to chat more camera stuff, street photography, gear, all that kind of jazz, check out the link in the description for the Discord server, Megapix Skills. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.